So you may be wondering, how can tomatoes, how can growing them be easy? I mean, maybe you've watched some other people's videos and you've seen how they're using grow lights and greenhouses and starters and heating pads. And really, besides it looking like a giant science experiment, I mean, just getting tomatoes started in the ground looks super hard. But then, even if you get them in the ground, there's all these pests and problems. And man, you may be like me, you live in Florida and nothing wants to grow here. But here's the thing. See, you may be like me and you don't live in a place that snows. See, you may live in the subtropics and the tropics, and that means we have the advantage. So today on Wild Florida, we're gonna talk about how growing tomatoes is easy. Hi, I'm Jacqueline, the Wild Floridian, and welcome to my channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to grow tomatoes. So let's start first with the scientific name, Solanum lycoparasicum, that means it's part of the nightshade family. It originates in Central and South America. And then, you know, the Spanish that came over and they went and learned about the plant from the Aztecs. I think the Aztecs called it tomato, the Spanish called it tomate, and then we in English turned it into tomato. So you say tomato, I say tomato, you might say tomato, and then uh, we said tomato? You get where I'm going. So you may be a little surprised by the fact that it comes from Central and South America because, I mean, the reality is, is where's that festival that they throw all the tomatoes at each other? Spain, right? Seems very wasteful, but it's what they do. And when it comes to cuisines, I mean, my gosh, when it comes to Italian cuisine, how could you not have a tomato? What about classic marineras and caprese? I mean, they are just foods that are centered around tomatoes. So to find out that this is actually a Native American plant, just blew my mind when I found out about it. And then I started going, well, it's native to the Americas and not just any parts of the Americas, but the tropics and the subtropics, which are just over yonder, then shouldn't it work pretty well right here in Florida? Yeah, exactly, right? You see where I'm going with this. So since we classically think of this plant from the European region, but it's actually from here, let's talk about how it acts natively, naturally, native naturally, something like that. So basically this plant is a vining plant. It runs from three feet to 10 feet long, kind of just depends on the temperature and the breed of the tomato, because yes, there are many breeds that are native to the Americas. And so it will usually run along the ground. It can kind of go up bushes and kind of weave its way through bushes. Um, it's not a climbing plant. So right where you have things like morning glories, which put out little vining things so that they can grab on and grow up. These are really, they're gonna be able to naturally trellis, you know, they're gonna be able to climb on those bushes. They're not gonna go straight up a tree, not without some help from you or me. So that means that they naturally occur as indeterminates, which means there's no set height that they get to versus plants that are have bred, been bred over time, which are determinate tomatoes. Those tomatoes get to a certain height and then bam, all the tomatoes at once. Indeterminates, they're gonna produce a little bit of tomatoes over time and keep going and keep going and keep going. So how do you start a tomato plant? Well, you can start them from seeds, you can buy them from a packet, from the store or online. You could take a tomato that you've eaten and just take the seeds out of it and plant them. Or you could buy a little tomato plant or someone can give you a tomato plant. Or if you already have a tomato plant or know someone, you can get a cutting and plant that in the ground too. See, you've got a lot of options with this plant, which is why I love it, because I'm all about saving money also when I start new plants. So I love the fact that I can buy a tomato and then just take out the seeds from it and then make tomato plants so that I can get, you know, free tomatoes later on. So since you're new to growing tomatoes, you're probably wondering why should I buy a tomato plant or should I just buy seeds? What would be best? So there's some advantages and disadvantages with all those. So let's start with your cheapest version, which I love cheap things, which is taking a tomato that you bought from the store and then just using the seeds from that. Well, the pro is that you were already buying the tomato, so it didn't cost you any extra money for you to go and buy this tomato. But here's the thing, is that depending on where that tomato came from, they might have grown this in Michigan and it has been bred to grow well in Michigan. And you may live in Florida, which is different than Michigan. I know, shocker, right? So you may be bringing a plant into an environment that is gonna try to struggle. And we don't really wanna try to struggle. We wanna make it easy. The other one is you could buy a packet of seeds. And similar to the ones that you get out of the store bought is that depending on where you buy your seeds, you may run into the same problem, is that those tomato seeds were bred to grow somewhere else. 
but you can get seeds from plants that do like growing here in Florida or the subtropics and the tropics. So you'll just wanna know what breeds work well and we'll get to that in a minute. Now, this is gonna be your second most cheapest, second most cheapest? It is second cheapest way to go and start a plant. So they're gonna usually cost you anywhere depending on the breed that you're gonna get from $1.50, maybe up to $3.50 if you're getting some really specialty heritage breed. But honestly, that's not that bad because you're gonna get usually 25, 50, even 100 seeds. Just a lot, because if a plant can make 20 pounds, whew, you got a lot of tomatoes. Now, one of the disadvantages of buying seed packets is that, you know, we may think that we don't have a green thumb when we plant them in the ground, but sometimes actually those seeds aren't viable. They're either too old or they've gone through some sort of process in transportation or moving them that has somehow killed them off. So it may not be you, it might be me, the seeds. It's a good thing to know because all seeds aren't equal. Now let's talk about transplants. Now, here's the thing about transplants. Those are those plants that you buy from the store. Similar to buying seeds and just grabbing tomato from the store is again, you may still run into the fact that these are not necessarily plants that were bred to grow in your area. So Florida, yeah, like when we talk about big beef steaks, you can grow them, but like, I mean, you will be challenged. Challenged, I wouldn't start with those. But the other thing is, is they just tend to be more expensive, right? So where a seed pack, it might be between $1.50 to $3.50, depending on the type of breed. A single transplant is gonna run you between $2.50, $3.50, up to $10. It kind of depends on the size of the plant. You know, when you get the bigger ones that are a couple feet tall, those will cost you a bit more money versus like one that's this big. Now, one of the things that I like for these, and I actually liked when I first started gardening, is that I don't know what that plant's supposed to look like when it first grows. Is that a weed? Is that my tomato plant? I don't know. I remember Googling. What does it look like when it sprouts? No clue. So it gave me a little more confidence to be like, that, that's definitely a tomato right there. I know it because I planted it right there for sure. Also, I have a bad habit on step, stepping on seeds. Um, so that gave me better confidence and like, yeah, there's definitely a plant there. Don't step there. It's, it's, you look, you just put the time and effort in. You don't want to go and step on it. And then when it comes to seeds versus transplants, one other thing that I think is a little bit more of an advantage is that usually with seeds for any type of plant is when you start it straight in the ground, you're gonna have less disruption to the root system when it's just where it's supposed to be. So when you move a plant around, you're more likely to kill it off. Now, tomatoes are pretty robust, because if you remember, I did say that those plants, you could also go and get them from cuttings, which is really just a six inch stem from the plant, and you can just plant those too, and you can get even more plants. So even if you bought a transplant, you can go and propagate it. Propagate it just means take, make more babies, and just go and plant more and more of those tomato plants. I know, I love it. Plant is super easy. Now, if you're considering going and doing scraps, which is like taking the seeds out of a tomato that you're gonna eat. Some places that you can not know the breed, but have pretty high confidence that those seeds will be viable in your state. And I don't mean just like the seeds being viable, I mean like the plant's gonna do well, is go to places like a local farmer's market or um, usually like small grocery markets. Um, I guess you call them ethnic markets. So we have an Italian market. Um, I'm Italian, so we eat Italian sometimes. And we went and got like heritage tomatoes and they were small ones and I used those because they were grown locally. So not only do they grow well in Florida, I knew they would grow well in St. Petersburg area because they had been grown in the St. Petersburg area. So doing stuff like that can also increase your odds of having a really happy, healthy plant. Another way that you can figure out how to grow some tomatoes without actually knowing the breed names, because honestly, I don't know the breed names of a bunch of the tomatoes I grow is that you look for tomatoes that are smaller. So whether those those cherry grape size, or I don't know what else they call them size wise, but they're smaller than like a quarter, those will tend to do really well in your subtropical and tropical area because they go from being, you know, just budding green to fully ripe pretty quick. So pests, as long as you're continuing to pull the vegetables off or fruit off the vine, pretty quickly, they're gonna tend not to be able to move in. So I like to use those smaller ones versus, you know, your larger tomatoes, it just increases the odds because you'll just be sitting there for days and days and days waiting for that plant to fully blush. Blush is when it turns red or orange or purple or whatever color. Yeah, they come in lots of colors too. That they just have the, the odds just increase that you're just gonna get a pest in them. So I like smaller ones because they grow, you snatch them, they grow, you snatch them, and you just got tons of tomatoes. 
comes to tomato breeds that people really, really like to use here, um, things like 100 Sweet or Yellow Pear, or of course the most famous is everyone likes to talk about, the Everglades tomato, which those ones are, I mean, those are small little tomatoes. I have not grown those, but I think it just continues the theme of small tomatoes tend to do pretty well. Fourth of July's have worked really well here for me. You can do a lot of different breeds, but focus more probably on smaller in the beginning, especially once you get your groove on. When you're getting your tomato groove on, get your tomato groove. So when it comes to growing your tomato plant, some things that you wanna do. One is you wanna plant it in that black gold, you know, that healthy soil that's not like what typically is here in Florida. You know, you want that high organic matter. It, when you dig into it, it's that dark brown to black color. That's what you wanna put your tomatoes in. They will be super happy. Though things like that Everglades tomato can deal with our natural Mayaka style soil. And then when it comes to where you plant it, you should consider besides having great soil, you want to also put it in a place where it gets four to six hours of full sun a day. Yes, I know online they will tell you they need eight hours. But remember, they're talking to the rest of the country, right, where they are basically in a temperate climate where it snows. Their sun that comes through the ozone is not as strong as what comes through in the subtropics and tropics. And because we live in that kind of area, we need to do more like four to six hours. Otherwise, we are just going to over sun our tomatoes. Don't do that. Mm -mm. And here's the cool thing. Since these things are native to Central and South America, they actually are perennials. I know, they can just keep on growing year after year. But we tend to treat them like annuals because once they get past that six, nine months into the one year old, they just really aren't gonna produce as much fruit. So they'll keep on growing as a plant, but I mean, like, why are you gonna keep it? So remember I talked about those cuttings, instead of you having to worry about seed saving and stuff like that when you feel like your plant's kind of done take some cuttings off cut down the original plant and put those cuttings in the ground and you're gonna have new plants in about a month oh and let me just speak specifically to my floridians um in central and south florida y'all we can grow them year round north florida no not quite but most of the year like nine out of 12 months you can grow it and the best time of year for us in the northern subtropics and tropics, we want to start these plants in the fall, very late summer if you're up in the northern part, or you're going to do late winter to early spring. Late winter for my southern Floridians, early spring for my northern Floridians. Now when it comes to these plants, remember I mentioned that they're vining. So here's the thing, is that you're gonna wanna have a support system. I know, we all need a little bit of support, but these literally need support. So you wanna consider putting in some sort of trellis system. So whether you wanna use spiral stakes or just like a teepee of bamboo or twigs or branches, I don't really know what other people use, I don't do that. Um, or you can make an arch trellis, wall trellises, teepee trellises, those are usually they call them tomato cages. Those all work really well. Um, and you wanna make sure that you use something to tie them up. Whatever you use to tie them up, do not let it be something really hard. So like plastic zip ties can really cut into the tomato and cut off the flow of nutrients and water up to the plant. So using things like gardening string or there's some like rubber, plasticky band, rubber bandy type ones that you can use. I just use gardening string, it's pretty easy. Just tie it up, it's not hard. But besides all those cages and trellises, there is one other method and it is called the Florida weave. I know, they use it all across the country. So what it is is basically using two stakes and some string and it holds up the plant and you can basically minimize how many materials you need to hold up a lot of plants because you don't generally want your tomatoes to run on the ground, but sometimes it's okay to do that too. So let's say you get your seeds, how far should you put them in the ground? Well, not very deep. Remember, with, when you see a lot of tomato seeds, they're pretty small. So just a scratch below the surface, I would say um, no more than like a quarter inch, half inch at most. They really, they're very tiny. You don't want to put them in too deep. And when it comes to pruning, do you have to prune? You'll see a lot of gardeners say like you, they highly recommend it. And you should do this if you want to get the maximum amount of tomatoes off your plant. You can get up to 20 pounds usually from a single tomato plant, which is like a lot. So, but if you don't, you're going to probably get an easy five pounds without doing it. So it's just really your call if you want to spend the time going and pruning through and you could get in between five and 20. I'm not saying that like you only get five if you don't prune. I'm just saying, I ain't saying, but I'm just saying. So usually what people do is they remove what they call the sucker, which is really when the branches go like this, it's this middle piece. 
that they're calling the sucker that they removed just to continue the, having the plant focus on producing tomatoes versus just growing branches. Now you may be wondering about pests. Oh my gosh, all the things that could come in. Now, what if something's in my leaves? What is that weird squiggly mark? What about the funguses? What about all this stuff? Okay, you live in Florida. Let me just be clear, something's gonna eat some of your leaves. And most of the time, it's okay. There's a few things like you might find the hornworm on it, which is a nine moth caterpillar. If you're willing to allow it to go and eat that, cool. Thank you for helping the environment. If not, finding another nightshade plant, which there are a lot of native, uh, there's some Native American nightshades that you can just go put it on, which you're not actually producing fruit with. It's probably where those caterpillars or moths originated from. So go chuck them over there. They can eat, continue the circle of life, and you can have your tomato plants. If the tomato's kind of near the end of life, go ahead, let them eat them out. It's fine. You can totally get rid of that plant. But the best way, instead of figuring out each way to stop each type of pest and problem that you might have, the best thing to do is just set your plan up for success from the beginning. And that really comes back to having soil, planting it in the right season, having the right amount of sun, and of course, watering it regularly. And one other thing that you can do to just continue to minimize your pests and problematic activity is add a companion plant. You know, you can add something like the classic basil with your tomatoes. Usually strong smelling things will slow down or kind of deter pests from coming into the area. It's not a full safe, it's not gonna stop everything, but it can help. So using things like basil, which you may be using in your marinara sauce anyway, so it might be great. But you can do some other fun things. I know I've mentioned this in some of my other videos, like I went and grew some right next to my native Florida firebush and it brings in lots of native pest control. So we actually found that a lot of the best looking tomatoes were deep within the fire bush and we pulled those out. So some cool things to think about, even if you're not from Florida, consider that there might be other native plants that you might want to plant near. But when do you harvest these things? I mean, you did the soil, you did the sun, you did all the season and all that stuff's right. And you companion planted, the plants looking great. You got this fruit on it, vegetables, is it a fruit, vegetable? It's both, don't worry about that, that's not important. But you got this tomato, when should you go and take it and harvest it? Well, one, if you just gently touch it and it comes right off, yeah, it's ready. That's probably the easiest one. But if it's starting to get what they call the blush, blush is when it goes from green to whatever color, so typically red, um, but if you have yellows or oranges or purples or one of the many other colors of tomatoes, as it makes that transition, you can pick them when they are right about to go into the lush and they will ripen up inside, but you're not gonna maximize your nutrition from that. And if you're growing your own food, that might be one of the reasons. So consider waiting for it to fully blush, but there are reasons to go and grab them early. Like uh, you got a hurricane coming, done it. You got a big storm coming, done it. Uh, um, you just you have some pests that are starting to get out of control on the plant, go take them, just get them in. But what also you can do is you wait till they fully totally turn their color. Usually if they're like 50 to 75% of whatever color, you may find that the undersides or the backside away from the sun aren't gonna transition completely. So go ahead and grab them, pull them in. But honestly, the best time is if you just gently touch them with your fingers and they just fall into your hand. They are definitely ready at that point. So I think we can agree. Growing tomatoes is easy. And if you're looking for other crops that are easy to grow here in Florida, well, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week on Friday and sometimes a bonus on Sunday. And while you wait for our next video, go ahead and check out this, this, and YouTube thinks you'll like this. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. Let's call the whole thing off.